welcome to the next day of our 12 days of Tremus. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, I'd say, a bit of a sampler type tree today. Um, I have drawn in myself some measurements and these lines are about a, a centimetre apart. Don't worry, they don't have to be accurate, mine definitely aren't. And then I've put another dot in each other, every other section to just make sure that I remember where I'm sewing what stitch. So first up, I'm going to go along my um, lines with a running stitch. So a simple running stitch is just up and down. And I'm just going to go up and down each of the lines. Try and keep my stitches even sizes. Not to worry too much if they're not. Run all the way along. Jump up to the next one and come back along that row. And one Just been outside with Reggie um, for him to have a little sniff around because he's getting a bit fractious because he's not seen his daddy all day and uh, he's sort of searching around for him, looking for him because obviously I've been, not obviously, but I have been uh, babysitting, dog sitting. So he's getting a little bit anxious and looking around for daddy. So we've been outside for a little sniff around. And I looked up and I saw the most vivid, bright shooting star. So wonderful. So I made a little wish. And hopefully that'll all be lovely for... And come true. Just make sure my thread's not going to pull through. I'm just going up and down a simple running stitch. I love I love running stitch. Um, it's a very underrated stitch, but as borrow stitch and canter stitch seems to be all the rage at the moment, it seems to be making itself a little comeback. I'm just going to come back a little bit so I can get two stitches in there. Yeah, it seems to be making it get a little comeback. It's got, it's, it's having a moment. Is running stitch. So but it's so effective. Simple but effective. I'm hoping I'll have enough. If I was on a not on a hoop or a, or the bars. You could go up and down, but it is quite difficult on all these because you can't manipulate your thread. The uh, fabric just sort of showing you that technique if you've not used it. is minus three degrees centigrade here in the UK at this very moment, which a lot of you probably, mm, hang on a minute, I think I need to come back. I'm just gonna undo that one, make the stitches a little bit smaller. Yeah, 
some of you worldwide that won't be very cold but it is here okay like I say try and keep your stitches even-ish I still haven't have I? oh I have well it's alright I'm just trying to make sure my last stitch is on the edge I also didn't do a, a starting knot and a couple of starting stitches only because I didn't know where I was going with it. But I'm not too worried. I don't always do the starting stitches as you know, especially if I'm doing slow stitch, I tend not to do that. Just when they're flattening out, it makes makes life slightly easier. Nearly to the top. I'm hoping I won't have to break off and um, go looking for something because I'm I'm not prepared. I've been a bit distracted by Reggie, I have to say, because he's. He just wanted to be cuddled all day, <laughs> which I'm quite happy to oblige. There's nothing better than cuddling a little doggy or little toddler child, is there, when you've got little ones. It's very lovely. So, I might get a, will I get a stitch in there? Mm, I'm going to put a tiny one in. Fasten that off on the back, as always, but I'm going to come in and do some French knots in my gaps. So I'm just going to mark in how many I want. Space those out a bit more. Don't worry about where you're um, putting your pen marks. Right, what have I got on next? I'm going to do a red. A red for the French knot. So start at the top. The French knot, I know we've already done it, but I'm going to come up, hold on to your working thread, wrap round twice. And back down next to where you came up, holding on to your working thread. So I'm up, hold on to your working thread, wrap around twice, go back down next to where you came up. Don't go down the same hole, it will definitely come undone. Up, hold on to your working thread, wrap twice back down next to it and pull through. They're not even. I'm not too worried. Come back. Cross. Up. One, two. Back down. Hanging on to the working thread. Working thread one, two, back down. One, two, oh, there we go. And now I'm carrying my threads along the back. But I don't think you'll see it because the fabric's quite thick. Oh, 
up through your fabric. Hang on to your working thread, wrap round twice, back down next to where you came up, keep hold of your thread and pull. Try not to get in a tangle while you're doing it. I might just get away with this little bit of thread left and might not. I'm terrible for hanging on to the bitter end with my threads. I think it's because I don't like to um, thread a needle up again. So try and keep out the way. I think a little note to myself is don't make the squares so small next time or stitch them onto a bigger piece of fabric so I can have the, these out further. But I did buy these new at the Harrogate Knitting Stitch. Um, so this is my first sort of outing with them. So learning, learning as we go. Two, I'm going to just about make it. Oh, please make it. Hold your breath, everybody. Up. Oh, I'm just about going to make it. Oh, gosh. This is what I do every time. Especially on silk threads as well, because I always think, oh, I'm so mean. They're, too, they're, they're so expensive. Right. I'm, I'm, I have just about made that. Lovely. Lovely. Right, I'll finish that off momentarily and I'm going to come in and we're going to just do some little cross stitches. So you're going to come up diagonally across and down. I might be teaching you how to suck eggs here. And you're going to come up again down across it so you're making a little crib a little kiss okay and then I'm gonna do another probably put a couple in that one just trying to get that evened up so across diagonally across with your stitch back up again This way. Simple but effective. All these stitches on this little tree are this one of the simplest. Probably the French knot's a little bit diff more difficult. If you're a beginner, but I don't get them right every time. I've sort of gone off skew there but I'm not worried this is for my own benefit not for this is for my pleasure we're not going in an exhibition or a competition or anything like that it's something we're doing for pleasure and I do have to remind myself this when I'm making when I'm sewing embroidering I must remember that I'm not in not in a competition, not in school anymore. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. So I'm going to carry my stitch further down. I'll probably put about four in here. And that's what you need to be mindful of when you're stitching. You're doing it for you, for your own pleasure.
I can get very lost in um, these kind of stitches because they are very simple. the kind of sort of stitching you can do when you've got a quiet night in one of your best movies on a nice movie on get your comfies on your PJs there we go so I'm gonna come I'm gonna put a trunk in and I'm, again I'm just gonna do a simple up and down line stitch, up and down straight stitch. Nothing exciting. Just very, very simple. I'm putting the trunks in. If you don't want to put a, a, a trunk in, that's entirely up to you. But the way I've sort of centred it, I've allowed for a little trunk. Okay. I found the atomizer, so hopefully, there we go. Simple. So happy stitching. And I will see you again tomorrow.